The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your lifespan? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the gra grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat? Or what will we drink? What will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your Heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. As I was uh, reading the Gospel, I remembered a poem and uh, I had to look it up because I couldn't remember who it was. I want to give her credit, Elizabeth Cheney. It's called The Robin and the Sparrow. Said the robin to the sparrow, I should really like to know why these anxious human beings rush about and worry so. Said the sparrow to the robin, Friend, I think that it must be that they have no heavenly father such as cares for you and me. If you don't mind, I'm going to sit down. Unless, unless you want me to stand, then we can all stand. <laughs> and to stand for 45 minutes is going to be kind of hard. <laughs> There's a story of a country uh, pastor preaching on Thanksgiving Day telling the congregation the virtue of having gratitude even for the smallest blessing they receive. It came time for the offering, and as was done back then, the hat was passed, his hat, for the collection. Well, the hat went all the way through the congregation, all the way back up to him in the front. Then he looked in the hat, and there was nothing in there. The congregation was waiting, probably with a little smile on their face, to see his reaction after the sermon he had just given, to be thankful for the smallest blessing. Well, he looked into the hat, he looked at the congregation, he looked up to heaven, and he said, Thank you, Lord, for giving me back my hat. <laughs> Small blessing. But the story goes on. At that point, he walked to the back of the church, and he gave his hat to a homeless person that had just come in from the cold. So now, what is the size of that blessing? What can you do with the small blessing that has been given to you? Grace, peace, and mercy be with you from God our Father and the Lord our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Usually, the sermon for Thanksgiving is about the message of the ten lepers who were healed. As you remember the story, only one came back with thankfulness and gratitude. The other nine did not. So our first impression is that one was good and the other nine are bad. But Jesus knew the nine would not come back. But he healed them anyway. His love for us is so great that we are healed even when we don't give thanks. You've probably heard this before. An unknown author helps us to remember and be thankful on Thanksgiving for the taxes we pay because it means that we are employed. The clothes that fit us a little too snug because it means we have more than enough to eat. A lawn that needs mowing, windows that need cleaning, gutters that need fixing because it means that we have a home. 
the space we find at the far end of the parking lot, because it means we are capable of walking. The huge heating bill, because it means we are warm. The weariness and aching muscles at the end of the day, because it means we have been productive. The alarm that goes off in the early morning hour, because it means that God has given us another day of life. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving. I'm sure you've been preparing and planning for weeks for this. Even Cindy wanted to be home tonight, preparing for tomorrow. But I kind of needed somebody here to tell me when it's time to stop talking. <laughs> so that's part of her job. I wonder how thankful we could be if tomorrow morning we woke up in a homeless shelter, not knowing where our next meal would come from. I wonder how thankful we could be if we were serving in the military thousands of miles away and our loved ones would be without us and we without them on this Thanksgiving day. I wonder how thankful we would be if some darkness of this world wiped out our livelihood, our home, and perhaps even taken a loved one from us. It is when we are without that we cherish the things which we have so easily have taken for granted. How many days since your last Thanksgiving have you awoken and the first spoken words are, thank you God, thank you for being you. Try to think of tomorrow, this Thanksgiving, as a moment which clearly puts your life in a new perspective. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus asks us, all to reflect on a very important question. What would happen if this very night your life should be required of you? Tomorrow, look at your life and see how very fortunate you are. Tomorrow, look at your family and friends and see how very blessed you are. Some of us may think of ourselves as quite blessed, and yet some of us may have lost something or someone most precious that we took for granted. Don't allow yourself tomorrow to look back at your Thanksgiving with regret over, over uh, distractions, pettiness, or over wasted opportunities of treasuring a blessed moment that may not be with you ever again. As we sit around at our Thanksgiving table tomorrow, tables filled with turkey and everything else, sit for a moment with a smile maybe even on the brink of tears, knowing that we are safe and content when so many others are not. And at that moment, think about how rich we are in the sight of God. For we have hope. We have freedom. We have opportunity that many of this world doesn't have. This Thanksgiving, let us become more deeply aware that God can awaken within us a new perspective on the lives we live being thankful for all he has blessed us with, just as we do every week around this table here at Grace. When we gather as one people, sharing a common unity in Christ, we give thanks to our Father for all that we are and all that we have been given. Our God is an abundant God, offering abundant life to all. We only need to open our eyes, our hearts, to hear his invitation to receive that abundant life. Beloveds, this Thanksgiving, my prayer to you is that God is thanked. He is thanked with joy and gladness, with thankfulness and with gratitude, and with a joyful heart that is dependent on him now and forever. Ten were healed. One gave thanks. Nine didn't. Why were they healed? because of God's steadfast love for his sheep that comes without a price. It is a reminder that our hearts are of no measure to his heart and his love for us. Giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father, in the name of our Lord, Jesus the Christ. Amen.